Previously, I attempted to recreate a water-powered sawmill designed by Leonardo da Vinci from 500 years ago. Da Vinci is famous for his many designs and sketches of various machines, weapons, and mechanisms, some of which predicted inventions yet to happen centuries in the future. But drawing a rough sketch of a machine that can work in theory and then turning it into a mechanism that runs continuously and smoothly is a whole other challenge. At the end of my previous sawmill video, I was able to establish a basic proof of concept. The Da Vinci's design worked and the water-powered sawmill would cut. But in the end, we only achieved a few inches of cut lumber before my artificial river ended up breaking. In this video, I'm going to explore the difficult process of trying to turn this concept from theory to practical reality and troubleshoot all the problems with the mill until I can successfully achieve a complete cut piece of lumber. Perhaps the best way to figure out how to make a working sawmill is to visit a working sawmill. So I did that. I actually did this a few years ago when on a whim on vacation, I was able to just barely catch the end of the demonstration of a working water powered sawmill near Mackinac, Michigan. Comparing this working mill to the recreation that I built, there are a lot of very obvious similarities. The rough idea is basically the same, reciprocating saw blade attached to a wheel that is spun by water, which also pushes a ratcheting system on a sled to slowly draw the log through the saw. But there are also some distinct differences. The largest difference is probably that they have an actual real water source, a dammed upstream, which they can control how much water is then released. And when they open it up, a ton of water comes flowing through, spinning their wheel like crazy. They have a little bit different design of a water wheel, which provides a much higher spin to theirs, and it's connected to a vertical axis with a geared connection to the actual saw. Their saw is huge compared to mine and has a large, distinctively shaped hooked teeth. When powered, it is quite fast and forceful, owing to all the water flow they have at their disposal. The ratcheting system is a bit more complex than mine, with much finer ratcheting teeth, and the lumber sled is fully enclosed so it can't bounce up and down. My favorite part is the placard about the designer of the mill, who was able to take off and just go fishing while the mill did all of the work for him. Which really drives home the whole point of this technology, freeing yourself from hours of manual labor. So obviously a lot of that I won't quite be able to implement, but I can at least apply a few changes based on what I saw. Plus, I got a lot of helpful suggestions from the comments in my previous video, and I can go through and try and implement at least some of these. However, the especially challenging part of this next step is that it's going to be against a bit of a deadline. This fall has been unusually warm so far, but winter is quickly coming. And I live in Minnesota where things are about to get very cold and frozen before you know it. So the challenge here is to get things up and running before the weather turns too cold and freezes us out. Let's see if we can get this log cut. So we made a few improvements to try and get this sawmill working a little bit better. Uh, we added three times as many paddles to it, which I think will allow it to get a little bit more consistent of a spin, hopefully. We added some kind of splash guards to try and retain some of the water that splashes out. Then we built the giant water tower. We now have two pumps. They're pumping the water up there at the same time, and hopefully that will provide enough flow. <laughs> Now we're kind of dependent on the volume in there. If it gets too low, the pressure drops and we lose the amount of speed and torque our wheel is going to have. But hopefully the pumps will keep it pretty consistently filled. It'll be a little bit of balancing act there. We've swapped out the blade with uh, one that's a little bit thinner and more of the right profile for cutting like this. Should hopefully cut a little bit better at least. Also has more chance of it binding though because it's thinner. We had this middle joint here, middle bar that broke. Previously it's made out of wood, so that's now metal. A few of the joints here are redone and metal, and we thickened up some of the wheels so it stays on the track a little bit better. Let me just have a ratchet on here for now. Eventually we want to figure out a, the dog system for holding it in. Just for testing purposes, we have the ratchet on there so we can get in nice and tight. I think we're looking pretty good to doing some more test runs and hopefully we can have some success. I think we're gonna do it without the ratchet system first, figure out the cutting and how much pressure we actually need to put on there and then figure out how to time it with the ratcheting um, so it isn't going too fast or too slow and we're just getting a good consistent cut. So we'll uh, turn it on, see what happens. More pumps! More pumps! 
This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. Trade connects you to the best coffee from the nation's top roasters and delivers them right to your door. Maybe you prefer the dark, savory notes of chocolate and marshmallows or the bright pick-me-up of a light roast. You can now find out with Trade Coffee. Maybe you can't travel to the mountains of Mexico to cultivate your next cup by hand, but you can still tour the globe and taste the difference. So how does it work? Step one, take the quiz. Answer questions about how you like your coffee and Trade will curate matches just for you. Step two, deliver it right to your door. Choose your delivery frequency and it'll appear at your doorstep, delivered at peak freshness. Step three, rate and repeat. Rate your matches so Trade can continue to delight you with coffees you love. Trade uses sustainable and compostable packaging to ship their coffee in because they love the earth. Trade guarantees you'll love your first coffee. If you don't, they'll ship you out a different bag for free. Just take the quiz by clicking the link in the description to get started. Free shipping is included, also free coffee. Use the link in the description to get your first bag from Trade Coffee for free. Explore the best coffee in the country with Trade. All right, so we're on uh, second or third day now, trying to get this to work and ended up forgoing the water tower. Ended up causing more difficulties just because the rate of flow would change as the volume of water in it would have a different amount of pressure. So we'd have to kind of adjust as we go. And it all just seemed to come down to the same problem of getting a consistent flow of water back in there as fast as we were using it. We also had trouble getting it up that high. So lowering it a little bit lower and going directly into the spout again made things a little bit better. So we have two pumps now going and powering it. We've been able to get a pretty consistent flow and with all the kind of splash guards, we're still losing some water, but we are um, pretty good supply. I think the first time we did this, it, it ran itself out in less than an hour and need to basically refill it from all the water splashing everywhere. So we got a pretty consistent flow of the river. It does seem to struggle at some points that it, maybe another third pump might help overcome and add a little bit more torque. So beyond that, we've been sawing pretty much most of the day and it's been very, simple. We don't really have to babysit it anymore. We got a pretty decent flow. We had a few issues that came up. We're not having much success with the ratchet. And we went to a weight system and trying to get the right amount of weight and pull on it, keep it advancing and cutting at a decent speed is, is a real challenge. Kind of check up on it every once in a while and give it a little, a little push. But if you push just a little too hard, it'll bind up and the wheel will stop, the cart will lift up and I'll have a lot of issues. We were able to get an inch in 10 minutes. It's still pretty slow and it's a pretty slow process. Still have a lot of issues to still work out. The saw blade is cutting a little bit crooked. I think there's just not enough tension holding it tight. So I might need to add like a threaded rod or something to be able to really crank it tight. Unfortunately, because the saw blade does not go a full frame, uh, we weren't able to put wedges in there to, to hold it extra tight. So we have a little bit of a drift to the cut, unfortunately, which I was not expecting with the sawmill. I thought it would actually be just default to straight, but I guess kind of the same issues you run into doing it by hand, you run into with the sawmill. We're making a lot more progress, but it's still very slow. To help improve the straightness of the cut and hopefully improve our cutting speed, I ground a new saw blade based on the saw blade I saw at Michigan, which is overall just a lot thicker. This blade is a lot more aggressive. Hopefully I can capture enough torque to fully utilize it. Ow! I think it's sharp. So we did a test run here and got a lot of resistance. I think it's because the saw blade is slightly offset from the frame, so it's pulling it too far over. So what we did is we added a second frame on the outside of the track to kind of balance the tension between the two frames. So that should keep the top and bottom pieces more in line with the track and not twisted. So hopefully we can have some success now. So we'll turn the river on and see what happens. It's a lot better. Think that did it? Pulling it in. Right, we're touching now. A little bit of resistance. Been good so far, a little bit more resistance.
The new saw seemed to work a lot better, but was still struggling with getting enough water flow to power it without things binding. So might just take a couple more tweaks and we can get this thing running. We may have overwatered your lawn a little. In my dirt. <laughs> The last few improvements I made to the sawmill seemed to make kind of the biggest difference. I ended up swapping it out with a much larger blade, and I, I don't know if the teeth made a huge difference, but I think the thickness of the actual blade definitely made it go a lot straighter. That in combination with the, a system of using threaded bolts that I could tighten, that has really made it just cut perfectly straight, which is something I couldn't even do by hand. And then when one of the other things I did, I just bought like another fourth pump to just push us over the edge. This one's even stronger than the rest. And then kind of came up with a better system of preventing clogs. So you're able to run it a lot better without any issue. But there is still kind of a balancing issue I ran into a lot with this, is just getting just the right amount of torque. Cause you want it to cut as fast as possible and just put just enough pressure on the actual log. But if you push it a little too much, then things start to break. The most frequent place that it breaks is the shear pin, which connects the axle to the water wheel. And I swapped it out with a few different metals and bolts. They either snap or they just wrap all the way around the axle. Um, eventually put it in with some hardened tool steel and that so far seems to be holding up pretty well. And in the end, it took about six hours to cut the full cut. That's once you subtract all the breakages and fixing and tweaking, um, which overall is not that bad. It's definitely slower than doing it by hand. We did a three-man team to hand cut a saw, swapping out with each other. Uh, that took us three hours. So it's about half the speed as a three-man team. But when you factor in how many man hours that actually is, it's a, a bit different. That's three hours times three people versus six hours times zero people. So it's still a, a little bit of experiment to find the right amount of tension to put on it. But the weight system right now seems to work pretty good. It's easy to adjust. Never really got the ratchet system to work perfectly. It always just seemed to just put too much pressure, bind it up, and cause it to break. It took over a month now of just tweaking again and again and again to try and get things working. I think with more water and more force, we could definitely get this up to be faster than a handsaw. Every cut after that when cutting the lumber should go quicker like it did when I did it by hand just because there's less material. So there's a lot of expense to this very first cut that we did. Ballpark, it was 126 hours of labor between uh, three people to build the sawmill. And then it was probably 48 hours of tweaking to get it running smoothly as it is now. And then let's say roughly $500 worth of materials to build everything, all the wood, all the nails and the metal for that, the axles. It's about two grand to get that very first cut to the sawmill. But the second cut will be pretty much free. So our backup plan, if we couldn't get like a river to actually flow and power this was, you know, maybe do something really drastic. A lot of people suggested like we build this giant uh, human powered hamster wheel to power it. And fortunately we didn't have to do that because like that would that'd take a lot of work to build one of those. So, you know, good thing we didn't have to do that. But anyways, that's, that's actually gonna be a, a video coming up here pretty soon. Uh-oh. 
it's very satisfying to get this very initial step to the industrial revolution. Hopefully we can get to the steam age here in not too long. So thanks again for watching. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. See you later. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.